The latest version of Premiere Pro CC now includes an on-screen graphic keyboard where you can customize your keyboard shortcuts. To open the on-screen keyboard, go to the Premiere Pro CC menu and choose Keyboard Shortcuts. If you're working on a PC, go to the File menu. Since we're going to make some custom changes to the keyboard, go to the Keyboard Layout Preset pull-down menu in the top left corner and choose Custom if it's not already selected. The keyboard that's displayed shows you what each key currently does without using any modifier keys. To see what the modifier keyboard shortcuts are, press a modifier key. I'll press the command key, and now you can see the keyboard shortcuts available when using the command key as a modifier. The command key turns blue, letting you know that's the modifier you're pressing. You can see the other modifier keyboard shortcuts by pressing the Shift, Control, and Option keys. Some keyboard shortcuts require two modifier keys, so if I press Command and Shift, I can see the keyboard shortcuts available using those two modifier keys. If you click on a key and look in the lower right corner, you can see a list of all the actions and modifiers related to that key. The modifiers that don't have a command associated with them aren't being used. You can see that there are three color categories, purple, green, and gray. The purple keys represent all of the commands for the application at large. But if you go to the commands pull-down window up here, you can see and set commands for a particular panel or window that's selected. So if I choose Capture Panel from this list, I can see the green keyboard shortcuts that are available when the Capture Panel is selected. So if there's green and purple on a key, and I hover my mouse over it, I can see the shortcut for the purple application at large option, as well as the key command that is specific to a particular active panel. If you want to find a specific command without clicking on or hovering over each of the keys, you can type the command into this search field, like audio crossfade, and it will appear in the command list. I can see that adding an audio crossfade doesn't have any keyboard shortcuts assigned to it yet, so I'll create one by clicking on the shortcut column until I see a blank box appear. When you're creating keyboard shortcuts, it's best to think of something that's easy to remember. Since this is a shortcut for Apply Audio Crossfade, I'll type Command, then A for audio. A warning has appeared along the bottom of this window, letting me know that the keyboard shortcut Command A is already in use for Select All. I'll click the X to clear that and type in Option Command A and there isn't a warning, so I can use that shortcut. But if I don't want to use two modifier keys and instead I type in Shift A, I get a warning that says that shortcut is already being used for the Track Select Backward Tool command. It also says that if I choose this, the original Track Select Backward Tool command will be overridden by this panel command when the panel has focus. I don't actually use the Track Select Backward Tool command very often, so that's fine. I'll come up to the top of this window and click on the Save As button, type in a name, and then click OK. Finally, I'll click OK in the lower right corner to close the keyboard shortcuts window, which will save and apply my changes. Now when I come back to my timeline and click on the edit point between these two clips and press Shift A on my keyboard, an audio crossfade is added, and I know that my custom shortcut works. A nice feature is that your custom keyboard is now tied to your Adobe account, so wherever you log in to use Premiere Pro, you can access your custom keyboard shortcuts.